Hello, AP Computer Science. We are going to be taking a look at question 7 from assignment 2-5, which is all about methods. And in this lovely question, we are going to be looking at uh, uh, oldie but a goodie. It's the dice rolling program from the repetition assignment. And we're going to be taking that code and modifying it so that the dice rolling code is going to be in a method called roll die. And it says that it takes the number of sides of that die as a parameter, and it's supposed to return a random integer in that range. So basically we're going to just have the code from exercise 6 from 2-4, uh, and then we're going to modify it um, so that I guess it'll additionally take in the number of sides and we'll make that um, a method instead of having it hard-coded. So I'll go over to my uh, assignment 2.5 and inside of D6 is basically I just copied and pasted the code from the old D6 and I've gone ahead and just made this change already. So in order to uh, make sure that I'm also checking how many sides, I guess I'm going to change these instead of saying how many D6s do you want to roll, I'll change this to how many dice do you want to roll. And then I'm reading that in as num dice, and then I have an additional um, variable called num sides. So num sides just stores the number of sides of the dice that I'm rolling. So you can roll a 20-sided dice, or a 10-sided dice, or a three-sided dice. It actually exists. You can. There's every side is just about out there. <laughs> Somebody's somebody was bored in the world and made crazy dice. So I guess I had to change the prompt here. So in addition, I, I get the number of sides with uh, the scanner. So this is how many sides uh, do you want your dice to have? I forget what it's supposed to say, but it doesn't really matter too much. So how many sides do your dice have? We're assuming that we're rolling all the same sides. So if we roll 10 dice, they'll all be the same type of dice. So that's great. And then that's going to plug in over down here. So if we didn't do a method, this is uh, our way of rolling, you know, however many dice. So, you know, we're just taking our usual math where we use math.random, multiply it by the number of sides, and add one. And then, of course, we cast it to an int to chop off all the decimals. So we're supposed to turn this into a method. And that's the main part of this question. And we want to send the method up an argument, which will be how many um, sides there are, and it will receive that in a parameter, which is like a variable that exists in the methods um, declaration. So I'm going to just put that in first. I'm going to put in the call. So instead of this piece of code, I'm going to cut that. I'm going to bring it back later, and I'm going to say um, roll dice and then send it uh, num sides. So that's going to be my method call. This doesn't exist, of course, but I'm just pretending it exists, um, just so that I can get this aspect of it. And I'd like it to, you know, take this number, roll a uh, generate a random number in the range one to this number, and return it. So then I'll go and write that method. So to write this method, you might not be confident about how to do that. So there's a bunch of hints here. So I'm putting it here. Um, it's got to return an int. It must return an int. And the reason is because uh, I am, I've am i embedded this method call in an assignment. And I'm trying to assign this variable's value uh, to the method call. So if that's your situation, then this method must be returning an int. So that tells me about how to declare it. So I know that it's going to be uh, well, all of our methods for now will be public static. And then next comes the return type. So because I'm assigning an int the value of whatever this method's returning, I know this must also be an int as well. So you can look at the context of a method to see what its type should be. Next, I'm going to put in roll dice, because that's the name. And I can tell it's the name because it's right here. And then I need a parameter. And the parameter I'm sending it is an integer, and that represents the number of sides of the dice. So I'm going to make an integer variable here. The name doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the same as this variable, because theoretically this method could be used uh, in all sorts of different situations. I could send it a hard-coded number. I could send it different variables if I wanted to. So you can name your parameter whatever you want, but its type has to match whatever the variable is that you're sending it. 
So that's the story there. And then I know that it needs to return an answer. So it's going to return uh, basically what I had copied and pasted before. So this is going to be the thing it's going to generate. It's not called numsides, though, here inside of our roll dice method. It's, it's whatever the parameter is called. So here it's just called n. I could have called it numsides as well, but I on purpose want to make it different just to show you that the names don't have to match, just the type has to match. So if we send it 5, this will be 5 and generate a random number between uh, 1 and 5. So it returns the answer, that's how this variable gets the code here. And what's nice about this is now I could take this method and put it into other projects and I could just call roll dice whenever I want to. So it uh, allows me to reuse that code. Uh, and if I know it works here, then I'll know it will work in any other method that I use as well. Don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So I compiled it, it works. I'll give it a run just to see if it's working. And so let's say I'll roll 15 dice and I'll choose uh, four sides and then it will show me all of those. Wow, four fours in a row. Crazy good luck. So it looks like it's generated. I didn't see a three here, but I'm pretty confident that it could generate a three because it can generate a one and two and a four. And so that's the total. And then I'll say play again and let's just generate one roll of a four sided dice. And, oh, check it out. It looks like I have a little bit of a mistake here. So uh, this isn't related. I guess it's from my previous version. I guess we have to re-initialize uh, our uh, total because I shouldn't have a total of 42. That's just adding this 4 onto our previous total. So it's actually not supposed to be a running total. Or actually, maybe it is supposed to be. Apparently, apparently it is supposed to be a running total. So I just, just disregard the last sentence I just said. It's all good. All right, everybody, I'm going to close it up. Thanks for listening. I hope that made sense. And if not, uh, give me some questions in Teams or come and visit me. Bye.